All right, so I found the tokens on the smart chain. We'll just deposit them back into Binance and, uh, uh, well, hey, no worries. We'll just use Binance Bridge and, uh, regardless of whether you're someone in somewhere like the US who might've moved all your funds off the Binance chain and now has them all stuck on the Binance Spark chain and doesn't know what to do, or maybe you're someone who actually wants to move your funds into the Binance Smart Chain ecosystem and are not quite sure how to do that. The entire Binance ecosystem is a dangerous and confusing mess right now and I have folk contacting me just about every day who've gotten into trouble uh, from not understanding what is going on here. So in this video, I'm just gonna look at three main things and there'll be our chapter markers for each in the description as well as in the navigation bar for the video. So the first thing is just gonna to be to have a look at these different blockchains and just run through the basics of what actually is going on here. Uh, important stuff to know so you can avoid getting into trouble and losing all your funds by accident when you're dabbling in all these chains. The second thing I'm gonna look at the Binance Wallet browser extension, which makes it quite easy to move both BNB and tokens between the different Binance chains. And finally, I'll be looking at a wallet app that you can use that allows you to move funds and tokens between all these different chains, including back onto their native chains that doesn't actually require that you live somewhere that has access to Binance Bridge. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So if you tried to withdraw funds from Binance, you would notice that you're given a number of options for different transfer networks, which you want to select to do that. Now, firstly, I should say that this entire language of transfer networks is deliberately misleading and confusing. They are no such thing. A tokenized representation of a cryptocurrency is not the same as that cryptocurrency. So there are a number of different networks that exist within the Binance ecosystem and different tokens and cryptocurrencies are represented differently on each chain. If we just look at Ethereum and BNB, for example, you'll see that you can actually deposit them both on the BEP2, that is the Binance Chain Network, uh, the Binance Smart Chain Network, as well as the Ethereum Network, which Binance calls ERC20. So depending on where you got your BNB or Ethereum from, it could be on any one of these three networks. Where it can get confusing is the same coin, that is BNB, is the native token on both the Binance chain and the Binance smart chain. So it is the thing that pays for fees on those networks uh, and is not represented as a token. And if you have BNB on the Ethereum blockchain, it is an ERC20 token. And some people still have that kicking around from years ago. Whereas Ethereum is the native token for the Ethereum network. So it will be what is used to pay for fees and things on the Ethereum network. And if you withdraw Ethereum from Binance on the BEP2 or BEP20 chains, what you're gonna be withdrawing is essentially a tokenized representation of Ethereum. It's basically an IOU, it is not real Ethereum. It's really important that you understand this because just because an exchange or wallet says that it supports Ethereum or BNB, for example, it does not necessarily mean that it supports that token on all of the same networks that Binance supported on. So if you do something like send a tokenized version of Ethereum that you've withdrawn on the Binance smart chain onto Coinbase, your funds will be lost. Things like Binance backed tokens, so that's like Binance pegged Bitcoin, Binance pegged Ethereum, BUSD, and pretty much everything on the Binance smart chain is only really supported with Binance.com. So if you're in a situation where you can't actually use Binance.com, and this includes people who are in the US who have to use Binance US, you're gonna have to use some other tools as an intermediary to be able to get your funds in and out of the Binance smart chain. So the first thing we do is just run through using the Binance Chain Wallet. Now it's basically a browser extension, so you can use this Binance Wallet directly with your ledger, no need to go entering in seed phrases or anything like that. Uh, alternatively, if you're using a software wallet like MetaMask that follows standards well, you can enter your seed into the Binance Wallet and you'll get the same addresses in there. Alternatively, if you're using a hardware wallet that doesn't support this plugin, you could just create a new seed and use this Binance Wallet purely as an intermediary. So sending the funds from your hardware wallet to the Binance wallet and then uh, doing all of these cross-chain things in the Binance wallet before forwarding them on to the exchange. So the seed that I just used is a seed from MetaMask and when I import it, I get the same address here that I get in MetaMask. And basically I had just withdrawn some BNB as well as some Binance pegged Ethereum to this wallet. Uh, to see the Ethereum, we just have to press this plus button here 
and we can actually just enable the Binance pegged Ethereum. And there it is. You'll notice that the Binance Smart Chain wallet is not a normal wallet in that it actually will let you use uh, several blockchains. So we can actually switch to the Ethereum network and you'll see the address actually stays the same because the uh, same address is valid on both networks. Uh, and it also supports Binance Chain. The key difference from this wallet though, we can actually switch back to Binance Smart Chain, click send, and we can actually just put our address that is from the Binance chain directly in to our wallet. And it will actually happily transfer the funds cross chain for both the BNB or our pegged Ethereum. And it's important to know that if you tried to do this in MetaMask, it would not work because these Binance chain addresses are not valid Ethereum addresses. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just run through how you would move some BNB and some tokens from the Binance Smart Chain uh, onto the Binance US Exchange. And if you try and send funds directly from the Binance Smart Chain to the ERC20 deposit address, those funds will be lost. So basically we need to get our funds onto the BEP2 network first, that is the Binance Chain network first. So the first thing we're gonna need is some BNB because BNB is the token that pays for transactions on the Binance Smart Chain. So we've got the BNB now there to pay for transaction fees and that's great. But the thing is that when you send funds onto the Binance chain, uh, these BEP2 ones, you need to make sure that you you must include the memo field. If you try and do a cross chain send from the smart chain, there actually is no memo field. So we're gonna have to send these funds from our address on the Binance smart chain to our address on the Binance chain. And only then can we send the funds from our Binance chain wallet on to Binance US or some other exchange, ensuring that we include both the address and the memo field. And this is why I say that Binance is an absolute usability disaster. So what we're gonna to need to do now is we're gonna to need to move this Bitcoin to from the Binance smart chain to the Binance chain. So what we'll do is we'll get our Binance chain address. We'll copy that. And we'll just say send. So first of all, we'll send the Bitcoin. We're gonna put in the address, which if we're using a ledger, we can confirm on the ledger screen. I'm just gonna send the maximum amount and say, send and basically what we can see here is this is going from our ledger address on the binance smart chain to our ledger address on the binance chain and it tells us this is a cross chain transfer so we can say send fail to send Ugh. So if you're paying very close attention, you'll notice the amounts of Bitcoin I'm moving just change. And that's because right now, as I'm doing this video, uh, the cross chain swap of tokens for Bitcoin specifically uh, between Binance and Binance Smart Chain doesn't work. You basically just get a transaction failed message. So if you run into that issue, you can either use the steps I'll show you later, or you can just try again another day. So we'll send some BNB to pay for these transactions. We'll just send a little bit. We don't need a lot. Just 0.05 should be heaps. And there we go. So we've moved some of the Bitcoin, BNB and Ethereum onto the Binance chain address. We can then deposit these funds onto an exchange like Binance US using the Binance chain. I cannot emphasize this enough. Sending an unsupported token to an exchange, even if that exchange normally supports both the cryptocurrency that your token represents and the network you're sending it on can still result in loss of funds. You need to be extremely careful with this. So we'll just start with Bitcoin. All right, so if we select the BEP2 network, we have both the deposit address for the Bitcoin as well as the memo. So we can copy them just into Notepad or something like that. And we can then just go into our Binance Chain wallet with the Binance Chain network selected. We can select uh, the Bitcoin. So we're gonna put in the address on Binance US. We're gonna put in the memo, because you've gotta have that. Do not forget that. And then we say max. At this point, if you're using a hardware wallet, you're gonna to have to open the Binance Chain app. So we'll just say send. And if you had a uh, software wallet, they would send straight away. If you got a hardware wallet, you gotta go through the normal routine. 
And there we go, the Bitcoin is sent. If we wait a minute and go back to Binance US, we can see that our deposit is now confirming. So that is great. So we can now also just send the Ethereum using the same process. And we'll send the BNB. So we'll select the BNB, send the maximum amount and send. Okay, so we can see that all of those balances are zero. And if we refresh our Binance US wallet and look down, we can actually see now that all of those deposits have arrived on Binance US. Okay, so this last thing I'll look at is an option you can use if you don't wanna have a Binance account at all and you're in a part of the world where you cannot use the Binance Bridge website. So basically the wallet that I'll be using for this one is the SafePal wallet. And look, you can buy a SafePal hardware wallet. I think it's absolutely garbage but you can actually just use the SafePal app as a software wallet, and that can actually allow you to move funds, uh, not just between the Binance chains, but also between other blockchains as well. So I'll just show you that. All right, so we've got that installed and we will say open. Okay, so we are gonna say, we wanna use this as a software wallet, and we just have to set a password before we can do anything else. Okay, so we're gonna say we want a software wallet. So like with the Binance wallet, you could just say you wanna create wallet and have a wallet that you use purely as an intermediary for this. Uh, or what, I, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna import a mnemonic phrase for a software wallet like MetaMask. And this is gonna be the same one that I used before. You can see it's automatically detected the cryptocurrencies that are on this account in the Binance Smart Chain extension, and uh, that's what we want. The key difference between this and the Binance Wallet extension is you can not only swap between the different Binance chains, but you can actually also swap from the uh, Binance pegged tokens to the actual Bitcoin chain. Though the key issue is that the minimum amounts of these transactions are actually quite high. So we don't have enough Bitcoin to do that, but if we look at Ethereum, we actually do. So BP20 Ethereum, you know, basically the IOU to actual on-chain Ethereum. And it will just move it from one wallet address to the other. So if we just say next, it'll give us the details of the transaction. So we'll just say swap. And there we go. So this is not instant either, it is gonna take a while. And uh, basically these are the details of the transfer that we can see. The other thing is you're not just dealing with Binance in this situation, so if you do have any issues, you actually need to contact SafePal support. So you know, those funds have left our wallet. You don't need to keep this app open and running while this is happening. Uh, and if you wanna find the status of your transfer, you can click on this little uh, arrows button, go onto the swap screen, and then just click up on this little green tab in the top right. And it will essentially just show you the status of your transfer. Uh, and that's still transferring out. All right, there we go. So we came back a little bit later and it's actually done the exchange. It didn't take 20 minutes at all. And if we go back out to our wallet now, we can actually see the uh, Ethereum is actually there on chain. And that is proper on chain Ethereum, not just an IOU. And we can then just send that back to any normal Ethereum wallet. So I'll just use Ledger Live. So there you go. So we can see that we've recovered the Ethereum now from the Binance Smart Chain to have actual real on-chain Ethereum that we can see in Ledger Live. And we managed to do that without having to use any of the parts of the Binance ecosystem that are geo-blocked. So that's things like Binance.com or Binance Bridge, which won't work in certain parts of the world. Honestly, if you're a newbie just starting out, at this point, you probably just need to avoid the Binance ecosystem entirely. Uh, like particularly the stuff with the Binance Smart Chain is easily, I think the most user unfriendly and dangerous thing that I've seen appear in the crypto space in a while. Uh, just so easy to muck up, especially if you're starting out. This entire mess with Binance and their Smart Chain is a really good example of the hidden risks of both altcoining as well as using non-custodial wallets where you don't control the private keys. So there you go. I hope that's helpful in terms of helping you to regain access to crypto that might be stuck on a chain that is difficult to work with depending on where you are in the world, uh, as well as just helping you to get your head around a little bit of what's going on with all of these different blockchains that exist, uh, particularly within the Binance ecosystem. 
So if you have any issues or you get stuck, just leave a question in the comments. And if you get totally, totally stuck and frustrated, you know, you can shoot me an email and organize a paid consultation or something like that. My details are on my website and uh, also available through YouTube. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.